Hi everybody, you've heard of the new Sony ZV-1 and you're curious whether it's actually the perfect vlogging camera and you might be interested in having it, then stay tuned and I will tell you my thoughts about it. Hi everybody, this is the new Sony ZV-1. It has been anticipated, it has been widely discussed, wildly discussed, because it's supposed to be Sony's answer to questions nobody probably asked, or maybe they did. Um, it's sold as a vlogging camera. So the idea behind it is that you take the Sony RX100, a great camera, one inch sensor, a great build quality and everything, and add a few items to it that make it ideal for mostly I would say video work. So what you add is a good microphone. Let me take off this dead cat. A uh, good microphone on top, uh, a, a flip out screen, the currently best uh, video functions that you can get on a small camera like this. So you get 4K, you get high uh, frame rates, you get most of the things you can ask for in a lightweight, compact camera that you can easily carry around with a battery that will last for at least one hour of, of uh, videotaping. Um, and everything at a price, I can tell you the price here in, in Europe, it's around 750, 800 euros. It's probably the same amount in, uh, in US dollars. So is this the perfect vlogging camera? And my answer while I'm not a vlogger is no. Based on my personal experience with it, it has one major issue and that is the focal length. If you look at standard vlogging imagery on, on YouTube, for example, what you will see is quite extreme wide angle shots. And this one has a 24 millimeter equivalent that will be cropped due to resolution in 4K it will be further cropped due to uh, image stabilization, which by the way is fantastic. It has great image stabilization, no doubt, but that will also crop. So it will end up at a focal length equivalent of around 30 uh, millimeters. And that is just barely enough to frame your face, but you don't get the surroundings. You don't get the, you know, the background, you get, don't get much information of what's going on around you. So I guess this is not ideal as a vlogging camera. But I think that when Sony decided to promote this as a vlogging camera, they just wanted to, well, hop on a train that was going really fast right now. But in the end, what they produced was a fantastic video camera, a camera for making YouTube videos as I use it for. Uh, it's, it's great for doing product reviews. It's great for doing like improvised studio work. And now let me tell you something about the top features from my point of view. The first one compared to the RX100 uh, until the fifth generation, as far as I remember, is it has a microphone input. So you can connect it to external microphones. Let me just try and show you. Uh, and what I do, and I can't show you right now because I'm using it here, I have this uh, Rode wireless microphone. I plug it, I put it on top, I plug it in, and it works fantastic. Even though, even the onboard microphone that they put here on top is quite, quite good. They even 
found a solution. You have a hot shoe here, and then they have this little dead cat, dead mouse probably, and you can slide it in here, and it will cover the microphone in a way that allows you to use it even in slightly windy conditions. Another main thing is uh, the, um, the focal length, the lens it has, not for vlogging, but for everything else, because it's a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent with an aperture of 1.8 to 2.8. The 1.8 admittedly is basically just for the 24 focal length. As soon as you start zooming, it will close down a little bit. But however, it allows you to create some defocusing some narrower depth of field so you can have not a cinematic effect but something quite decent for just small things you know then it has and and uh, well to emphasize on that it even has something that is called the defocus let me just show you here this is the defocus button and it's gonna be probably not so easy to show you like this but basically you press it and it will automatically, regardless of the settings you have, unless you are at the, uh, the widest aperture, it will open the aperture all the way and allow the, for, for the background to get a little bit defocused. It's not, I mean, it's, we're talking one inch sensor, we're talking an actual focal length of uh, 9.4 millimeters. So it's gonna be, not so easy, but still, it's, it's, it's something that has an effect. Then you have the flip out screen. That's really great. I mean, this is something that, wh whether you hold it like this, or you put it on a tripod and have it f face you, so you can, you can check what, what's going on. It's, it's really, really, really good. Uh, what else? Oh, it has a, a, the probably most recent generation of Sony uh, autofocus. So it has face detection, it has eye focusing. So that works really, really good. And it has the product presentation mode. And that is something that is incredibly convenient if you want to do like product presentations in your videos, you wanna show a product. What will happen compared to made well, basically all other cameras that I know of, and you may have seen this, one has to either cover your face with the product you wanna show, or if it's a small product, you hold your hand behind it to allow for the camera to focus on the, on the thing you, you wanna show. And this one does it automatically. There's, there's an algorithm in it that detects if you're moving something closer to the lens and it will tell the camera to focus on that because that's probably what you want to show and it works decently well i mean it's not a hundred percent but it's quite fast and it works decently well as, as i said um what else for everything else it's basically let me just show you the menus here you have the usual um Sony type menus with the categories on top. Um, so you can go through your categories and then go into the menu. The screen is a touch screen, but has no effect on the menu system. That's kind of, well, I don't know why they did it. I, for example, the GR3 Rico has a touch screen that allows you to change settings in the menu also. This is something that you have to get used to. It's not tragic, but it's uh, it may have been nice to have that option too. The the whole setup, the outside of the camera is a little bit different from the um, RX100. It's it doesn't have so many wheels. Well, it doesn't have this wheel uh, for your settings. You change your settings. Let me show you by pressing the mode button. The mode button will go into your options, into your shooting options, and you can select the, the options you want. Obviously, and that is a very convenient thing, once you're, for example, in the video options, you can select whether you wanna have it, uh, um, I think the first one is program mode, 
um, exposure priority, shutter priority, or fully manual. So you can set it to fully manual and set all the parameters you prefer to have in there. And then you have, as usual for newer Sony cameras, you have your function button on the back that will go to the most frequently used or, and it's programmable options here. So you can set your audio input levels. You can set your, I don't know what I said here, um, stabilization, things like that, um, to uh, have them, to have quick access to those. And so what are the conclusions? And, you know, it's if you want more technical details, you may just, um, I, I will put a link in the description where I link you to the Sony page or to the, actually, I will send I will link you to the Amazon page, at least Amazon Germany. So if you're in Germany and if you're interested in supporting the channel and buying this, I will get a small percentage. So and, and then you can you can access all the information and details you want. But my conclusions and then I will stop talking are um, it's a perfect camera for video, for small video projects, for, it has a good image stabilization, it has great video quality for the size of camera it is, it has great video possibilities for the type of lens you have. Obviously, you have a bigger camera, you have a bigger sensor, you have a, a, a larger aperture, fixed focal length lens, you will get more cinematic looks. But that's not what this is about. This is about r doing small, fast video projects that you can basically have in your pocket. This is the difference between this and bigger rigs. And it's all these features that increase the quality of your videos are also easily accessible. And this is the philosophy behind this camera, I think. It's a camera that's supposed to help you create video content easily and at a level that is, let's call it semi-professional. You know, that, that, that's, the, that's the perception I have of this camera. So um, I'm really happy with it. I'm now shooting on my iPhone because I'm presenting this one, but usually the videos that, that I've done, like the last two or three, were all shot on the ZV-1 and I'm really happy with it. Thank you and have a great day.